Welcome back to the greenhouse. We're out here the day after. We set up all of our polytunnels, our little microclimates inside the greenhouse here, and we're going to be setting up our water heating system timer. So I wanted to share putting our timer on and just setting the timer up. Now I have a similar timer running right there, and we're going to show the process of setting it up here. Now if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing. Got a lot of you on board following along with all of this. We really appreciate everybody we've got here. Being that the sun isn't even up yet, uh, none of our water systems are flowing. We didn't have enough energy to carry through the night, especially without a timer. So definitely want to build upon these systems to get better longevity here. Coming on down, I did start myself a fire. The sun isn't even up yet. Just barely got enough energy to push all of our compost heating here. So barely enough energy to run our compost and geothermal and stuff. So what we're doing today is setting up this timer. We're going to put it together, set it up, and operate our water moving system for the compost heating. But before we do, we can go check out the pile itself. It is cold and rainy out here. See my breath sitting about 1.30 there, about 1.30. We've still got a whole yard full of waste and a garden full of waste. We've got lots of potentially nitrogen rich material. You can see that steam just rolling off that thing. It's been doing that for two and a half weeks now. So we've got to get this thing covered and insulated so we don't lose any more heat than we need to so let's get the door closed and let's get some work done here it is warm up at the top we're sitting 101 we held 51 this only holds time for like 12 hours it's a cheap little thermometer there but you can see just how much that heat on this end builds up so we want to try and route some of that heat to other places here let's get this timer set up first things first we've got our timer and we've got the little battery case now this battery that came with it is absolutely tiny but it seems to work well for this system here we've used this same exact timer I think the timer was about $20 itself so we're just gonna go ahead plug this little guy in All right, so I did plug it in. It didn't feel like it closed all the way. I don't know if you guys can hear it ticking, but the timer is ticking now. So this battery works, system's good. Now we've got to wire in all of our wires. I'm gonna mount this on the wall back here first, very simply. Now we've got one, two, and three mounting holes. So we've got all these holes go all the way through easy mounting, so I'm going to set this up. So we've got a nice solid mount on this thing. It's not going anywhere. We don't have to worry about anything coming loose and falling off the wall. So this thing is pretty cool because it's versatile. You can use it for DC or AC power. So it's not just one or the other. It's a very nice little option for inside the greenhouse. Ours has been running in the damp, cold greenhouse for over a year now. So it's definitely got the longevity to it that we're looking for, especially running systems like this. So we've got some very simple little prongs here. We've got some wire strippers and crimpers, so we're going to go ahead and connect our solar system to the timer here. So we've got our positive and our negative, which I don't know why I wired the red to negative and brown to positive, but that's the way I did it. Yes, I did cut right through my wires. I got these two alligator clips. I can put butt connectors on the back of these and I'll have two little testers so I don't throw anything away. So now we take our wire, we've got our wire, and we've stripped. So we just stripped a little bit off the end of the wire. That's all we're doing up here. Just wanted to share how well this thing works. It pays to have a nice little mechanical leverage on it as opposed to the regular ones or using a knife or something like that. So now that we've got our wires ready to go, we're going to bend that copper, slide it right in, and then we're going to crimp it down here. All right, 
So now we've got our positive and our negative. We're going to go ahead and hook up our negative first. A little bit closer view. So we're going to be taking the negative, sliding it up under, and then we're going to tighten this. Carefully, we don't want to break it. So now we've got our positive line coming in and we've got power on the system there. That's good to see. That means we did that right. So positive negative coming in from up here at our solar controller up there. So we're just taking scrap pieces of wire and running it into this fitting here. So you can see that wire come right out. So once we've got it to this point, all we got to do is crimp it down and it's nice and sealed up. Same thing with the red positive wire. We're just going to slide that right in there till it comes out, get it situated, and then we're going to crimp it down. So now you can see that we kind of pinched that wire in there and it doesn't want to come out. So we've got S1, S2, power, negative, L2 is the negative, and L1 is going to be your power source. So we put the black cord and then the red cord. So all of these are connected. Go ahead and close that bad boy up. Got some power since the system's been off. All of our wires coming down, running into the timer and running back out here. We just gotta connect it to the pump and then we are in business here. Hook up the yellow for negative wire and then our blue wire was the positive. All right, so we've made our two connections. These are just haphazardly hooked up right now. I can make more permanent connections in the system here, but for right now, this is on auto and none of these are on except this one little dot right here. So now I can click and turn it on. We can see our output line. And we've got water flow now. Not quite warm yet, but now we have a timer and we can go through here and take a small little pick and we can pick up every 15 minutes so we can run this every 15 off every 15 so for half hour cycles basically 15 on 15 off and then we can get really good longevity into the night just building on our system and getting the best and most efficient system possible with what we've got. But we did have a little bit of energy coming in off of these systems just as the sun was breaking. It's maybe seven, a little bit after seven o'clock now. We've got heavy clouds that moved in and they're dropping rain. So that blocks out a lot of the solar energy that we can pick up. Now these systems will just sporadically run and pulse throughout the day here. And we've had a fire, so it's going to stay warm in here no matter what all day. But we've got all these systems in place. We've got our timer set up. Those days that we don't come out here, we're going to have all of these autonomous systems running for us. The next thing we've got to do is get heat to our tunnels and get ventilation going, nice airflow. Lots of things to do around the homestead and around the greenhouse here. I've got this windmill. I got to get myself a nice pipe. I'm going to get that mounted in the ground before it gets too cold and the ground freezes. So I want to be able to set that up and run the wires in and power some other system with this 500 watt wind generator. And I know they don't operate at max capacity. I'm hoping for maybe 250, 250 watts would be awesome because even if I don't draw those 250 watts, I'll be able to operate whatever systems I need to because we've dealt with 100 watt systems and piggybacking onto those and operating the best we can with what we've got. So if there's any questions on anything, let me know. I've got this little case cover here. So we've got our little cover, very nice little seal. Same exact one we are operating on our other systems. I'm going to get another one of those to operate the timer for our pond pump here. There is just literally endless things to do. We're going to get our lights set up inside these tunnels, which is kind of a trick. And we've got a ton of heating experiments. I've got myself some new pumps here. Got myself this little diesel pump here, and I've got a super small C-Flow. Uh, 4.2 gallons per minute. So since we stole our pump from our tank here, I was out here planting seeds. We've got lots of seed planted in 
any open space possible, but we've got this tank here that we're going to be using as a thermal mass storage off of the stove. Lots of cool experiments coming. So before this video gets too long here, I just want to thank everybody for checking all these videos out and hopefully everybody got any questions answered and better understands how to wire up a timer. With that, I'd like to thank you guys and I will see you in the next one.